ESC Radio live from Kiev and Austria is being represented by Nathan Trent with a song running on air. We have Nathan here for an interview. Hi Nathan. Hi everyone. Hi there. <laughs> Nathan, uh, some positive energy for you first of all because we came a little late this morning here to the press center and okay. uh, we missed the first uh, rehearsals. Okay. So what I had to do, I walked around and asked people, can you tell us something about the first rehearsals? Okay. What did we miss? Austria. You missed Austria. It was by far the best this morning. Oh my well, god. This is serious. This wow. Wow. Everybody well, said. you know, I've heard like a couple of times right now that people were uh, kind of applauding and stuff, so I'm very excited about that. I, I'm glad that people um, enjoyed it. I, You know, it's the first rehearsal, it's still a rehearsal, <laughs> so things are probably going to be changed, like a few things, um, but I'm actually liking it a lot and getting used to the stage. Uh, I actually never um, practiced with the moon before, so uh, oh. yeah, it was like kind of a rough thing, <laughs> but it, it went out pretty well. Yeah. How did this uh -huh. concept come up? Because I, I saw you well, maybe two or three weeks ago on German television in the yes. show, you performed the song, but yes. that was very pure, with nothing, uh, nothing around. Good. There was also Levina, the German girl. Right. And uh, yeah, so this concept for the performance here in Kiev, how did that come up and, how, and to what extent were you involved in this concept? Oh, you know what? It was really my idea. So the, the oh, people okay. really gave me the possibility to to um, project my visualization and put it, uh, that make it into, uh, bring it into life. How do you say that? Yeah. Um, uh, I I just saw a video on on, on in the internet, and uh, I saw a video with a moon with with this uh, half moon. I say, like, wait a minute, and then I just uh, I decided to go uh, with the definition to look it up, and. It has a lot of definitions, everything is positive, but the most important one which catched me was self-belief. And this song is about self-believing and believing in what you can do, having a goal, um, having having an aim and, and the dynamics. So the moon is flexible, it changes every time, but it's always there. And it's like, um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful metaphor and a beautiful symbol for what the song is actually expressing. So I'm very glad that we, we could make it come true that, it's, that I'm the man in the moon. <laughs> so tell us about the selection of this song because you were internally selected by Austrian television right. yes. and so I imagine the song was basically written for Eurovision. Um, yes and no actually because I've been to Los Angeles at that, poem, at that moment and I, already written, I, I had already written three songs and uh, four songs sorry and then I met uh, Bernard Pensias, uh, who is an Austrian producer but lives in LA, has been living there for 20 years and uh, they said, yeah, well, you, you ha we got your style, but can you send us something different? Because the four songs that I sent in were more of like uh, faster, faster songs, like more electronic vibe. And then I said, you know what, then I'm going to do something really completely different, still in a catchy mood, but uh, a little bit more organic. And it somehow developed to be the song it is after three months we worked on that. Um, yeah, and I really have to say it's like 100% me and projecting it to the stage, we have, of course we have a show that we want to do, so I'm glad that we have the facilities and the possibilities that we have. Because actually the, the thought behind this question is if, if you have a thought that Eurovision needs a special song, if you, because some people when they think Eurovision, they think, okay, well, if I go to Eurovision, I really, I need a special so song because not every song works in Eurovision. Was that a thinking for you? Well, right, you're, you're right. It's always different, you know, and every year is another type, guys, so we never really know uh, what is going to affect us. I, I have to admit, I watched all the previous uh, Eurovisions from the past years and I always try to, to figure out what's the sound what what do people enjoy and I came to the conclusion that it's actually just you just have to believe what you sing and you have to uh, be 100% sure of what you want to say and this is what people hopefully enjoy and I'm enjoying myself on stage and the song fits the current situation very well so I'm very happy and glad that it's my song and that I can can sing for my country I wonder if you uh, because uh, Austria has had quite different uh, different experience over the past few years. Austria had a winner, then there were the Make Makes not doing that well, and then there was Zoe. Did you meet any of them, and uh, did you share experience? Did you give did they give you any kind of advice, maybe? I met Zoe and I met Conchita, uh, Zoe uh, at the Open Bar, and we we really we clicked. She's really funny. She's really like a, a cool girl, and uh, she she knows what she wants. And that's very very cool. She. 
she just told me, you know what, it's gonna be so much, so much that happens over there. There's gonna be like a wave of positivity and just ride on that. And I'm, I'm really doing it and, and people are so nice and friendly. I'm enjoying every second. And Kachita said, you know what, just stay true to who you are. Just do your thing. Believe in what you want to say and then people are gonna hear it, hopefully. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really just, feel, I feel blessed and very grateful. You did cover versions of three or four um, recent yeah. Eurovision songs, yeah. and I think they were selected by, by the fans uh, right. of Eurovision. Right. Um, and one of them was Italian, I think, that was a French song, and uh, the uh, uh, Albania song that was in English. Right, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so your, your song is in English, uh, but you're you are bilingual, you're right. um, half Italian. Yes. I mean. So language is for you... Uh, kind of an issue, and it's always an issue in Eurovision, so I wonder, if have you ever thought about doing your own song in other languages? You know what, uh, I grew up with English music, uh, with American music, my dad and my mom always listened to, you know, J-Lo and, and Whitney Houston and, 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 and Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson, so I had always like a English speaking music in my house, so I sort of connect to the most to English, but I always write also in Italian, and uh, I have one or two songs in, in German, but the thing is, I felt for that moment, as I was in LA, and as I knew everything was about to come, I needed to connect to the song. This is this works the best for me in English. English. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, what can we expect uh, of Nathan Trent after Eurovision? Uh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you maybe working on an album for example? Absolutely. Song? No, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a single right now and I'm, I'm going to release it uh, uh, after your vision. Um, yeah, I just hope uh, people are going to like what I do and listen to it. And um, yes, it's going to be it's going to be a new side of me. Okay, cool. Curious cool. to see that. <laughs> so would you, would you sing a part of your song for the listeners? To oh, sure. It would be cool. Sure, of course. I'd say, uh, yeah. Hey now, if you push me down, I'll get up again. Hey now, if you let me drown, I'll swim like a champion. I'm sure there'll be good times, there'll be bad times, but I don't care, cause I'm running on air. Hey. Thank you so much. Beautiful voice. Thank you very Thank much, you. Nathan, and good Thank luck you. for the competition. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs>